What's up, everybody? Your favorite man with an ultra ball has written a book. It's called My Very Happy Life, and it details my journey living with my rare cancer diagnosis known as Von Hippel Lindau disease. I want the book to inspire you and encourage you to reach for your dreams, and the best part is half of all profits are going to support the VHL Alliance in order to help raise awareness on VHL. Link to my book is in the description. I hope you enjoy it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain of that subscribe button as we climb even further beyond the 1k ladder as I continue to make video after video ladies and gentlemen uh, by the time you see this though, this is, this is gonna be up on like February 7th uh, but we're recording it on the 6th so I've recorded like five videos today four videos today something like that I really appreciate y'all telling me that I'm doing well on the grind I really do appreciate it so I figured that with the new ban list uh, soon to be in effect next week you know I've been playtesting Castura for months now during this tier 0 toxic format and I've been trying to look at other builds on YouTube. God, I feel like I'm going to get a lot of hate for sounding like a pompous prick, but I'm really not trying to do that. Um, like, I've been trying to look at builds of Kashtiro on YouTube, and like all of the builds I'm looking at, I'm so confused why people are playing the cards that they are, because they're just not good. <laughs> so like, I've been playtesting this stuff for months. I feel like I have a very good idea of how this deck functions, what it can lose to, where its choke points are, how it thrives. And I want to put my build out there. I really didn't want to put my build out because like, I kind of wanted to keep it under wraps for a potential regional that I'm going to in Georgia on February 26th. That's like literally how confident I am in this deck. And normally like I show off my builds willy-nilly, but this one was like, no, like I kind of want to keep it under wraps, especially since I'm getting more of an audience too. But I'm like, you know what, fuck it. Like, I, I do not like the builds that I'm seeing on YouTube, and I want to help the community out, because, like, man, I saw a 51-card build from some YouTuber, and, like, the deck was garbage. Like, it, it was so inconsistent. It was playing Stormwinds. You don't play Stormwinds. It was playing the Adventure Package, which has just proven to be inconsistent. Uh, no one's playing Astral Kariba. Why is no one playing Astral Kariba? The card's a disgusting extender. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm really not trying to sound like a prick. I really apologize if I came off like that. It's just... The, the card choices that people are making I think could be better and it could just be things that people aren't thinking of or they're still just experimenting around with in their own build and I understand that. So with all that out of the way, let's dive into my build of Cash Tira post February 13th ban list 2023. So starting off, you of course have your three copies of your $70 Cash Tira Fenrir. This is actually not the heart and soul of the deck as like most like stun decks do that play a Cash Tira package of three Fenrir. It's actually Unicorn. So what's interesting is that Unicorn is like your combo starter. You play Unicorn to get you to your uh, Papias, which is now Theosis, which is uh, at the time of me making this video on presale, $100, same with the field spell. You know, it gets you to uh, Theosis. You play that to either get to your Fenrir, which can search you Rise Heart, or, you know, you play Fenrir to search you, you know, Unicorn if you have, like, Birth in hand. Or if you already have Theosis in hand. So, you, the main card that you want to open with is Unicorn. If you get the Field Spell in your hand, you play that to search Unicorn, usually. Because then it gets you to Fenrir, which, of course, lets you make your rank 7 Xyz plays. Both these cards are absolutely disgusting in their own right. You've got to play 3 Veej if you're not. I don't know what you're doing. And then we're playing three copies of Cash Tira Rise Heart. You've got to play three copies of this card. I really wish that this said during the main phase because then like you could kind of potentially make an argument for playing like Cash Tira Preparation, which you don't want to play. Um, so that that way you could summon this during the opponent's turn and then make them mill cards. But that, that almost seems a little bit too broken. Um, but this card's disgusting. You usually banish Big Bang, uh, banish the top three of the opponent's deck. This becomes level seven. Then uh, use Shangri-La, Shangri-Era, technically I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Shangri-La to lock out a zone and then Big Bang will take like either Unicorn or Fenrir, whichever one you prefer, uh, from the Shangri-La and then summon it to the field. That gives you another two level sevens on the board. Very broken. Um, and then we're playing one copy of Scareclaw. You only need one. I don't know why people are playing two. It's a, an amazing Baguska out. It's super heavy samurai, 2600 defense, ass. And uh, it, it's it's fine at one. Like if it, for whatever reason pops, you get it back with birth, it's fine. I never found myself wanting more than one. It's fine as is. I could be wrong, but so far it's it's been great. Um, and then also only one tier element cash tier. Can I just say how busted I pulled in my uh, sneak peek packs? I pulled this. I pulled cash tier rise heart. I pulled one um, race off. Like I pulled so many goodies out of my packs. Like it, it, it was disgusting. I did like seventy dollars worth of entries, twenty two fifty a piece. But still, like 
I pulled really good. Like, I'm not trying to flex, but I'm just like, holy balls, we pulled so well. And then last up for the engine of cards, we're playing three copies of Astral Krebo. Kids you not, I've watched like 10 deck profiles of Kashtira. No one's playing fucking Astral, and I don't know why. This card's disgusting. <laughs> so what it does is that it's an activation effect in hand. You reveal a number exceeds monster in your extra deck. So i.e. Big Eye or Diabolsis. And while it's face up on the field, you're locked into only summoning Xyz monsters from your extra deck, which you don't care about, but it copies the level of the rank of the Xyz. So if you reveal a number monster that's like a rank seven, then he becomes level seven. So therefore you can make a Diabolsis that can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects because any Xyz monster that's Xyz summon using Astral as a material gains the effect that it can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects. And people mistake this all the time where they think, oh, once this is detached, then it can be destroyed by battle or by card effects. No, it gains that effect. So in order to actually pop it by Bow or by card effects, you gotta like Dark Ruler it, Impermit, something like that. This card's amazing because if you open up Unicorn plus Astral, you end on a Rise Heart, Diabolsis, Shangri-La with three zones locked out. Like, that's disgusting. And the, then the Diabolsis can't be destroyed by Bow or by card effects. And it's 2800 attack. So like, I'm just gonna start banishing stuff on the next turn anyway. It's, it's absolutely insane. I don't know why more people aren't playing it. It's so good. And then next up, we're playing three Shifter because we don't care about the graveyard. And then we're also playing three copies of Ash. So in testing, at first I wasn't playing any hand traps. I tried like a going second build with triple Lightning Storm, triple Evenly and things like that. And what I ended up realizing is that this deck kind of has to play like a control stun deck or kind of like how Sprite's going to have to be played now where you play a decent amount of hand traps to help slow down like whatever the opponent tries to do so that you have the chance to play on your turn. Um, I was originally trying to go with like buy steals, but the problem with buy steals is that if the opponent doesn't deal with the buy steal during their turn, and like if you go second, then you're essentially just trolling yourself because only Unicorn and Fenrir both say that you have to control no monsters for them to special be special summon. So if you have like a Magnema and you hit like a Shayrin against a tier element player with a Magnema and they just pass turn and you draw, okay, you have a Magnema and then you search a Druid Worm at the end phase, but that's the only monster you can play unless you're able to hit a birth off of Prosperity or by opening it. And you only play two birth. You don't want to play three because it's bricky. So basically, in theory... The deck can't play by steals. It can't main deck Nibiru. It can kind of play Sphere Mode if you really want to, like in the side. It can play Pankratops, which is cute as like a side deck option. But you're basically just stuck with playing hand traps. And DD Crow, when I tried that, was just kind of inconsistent because it's like it conflicts with the shifter. And then it just gives more darks in your deck for the opponent to buy steal you, which really isn't that big of a deal, but you don't want to give your opponent a lot of advantage. So I found that the hand traps was just like the best way to go. Shifter, Ash, and then later on you'll see uh, the other hand trap that we're playing. So I really like Ash. Ash is just awesome. Uh, and then next up, we're playing three copies of this $100 card, if I could... Uh, Get rid of this glare here. And then we're also playing three copies of another $100 card. <laughs> so um, here's the thing. You got to play three uh, Theosis and you've got to play three of the uh, Race Soth. I keep on wanting to call it a, a Pressured Planet but uh, or Primeval Planet. Um, but yeah, no, th these cards are disgusting. Theosis is an E-Telly, and then Ray Soth is just the tier element version of the field spell, but for Cash Tira. Um, and then once a turn, whenever Shangri Era activates this effect, you get to pop a card. All your monsters gain 100 attack and defense for each different attribute on both players' fields. Um, and then we're playing only two copies of Birth. I see so many people playing fucking three copies. Stop playing three copies, everybody. You don't need three copies. Three copies is really brick. Um, you know, if the opponent plays like a board wipe on you, like Lightning Storm or Evenly, and this gets banished because either you played a D-Shifter or you have a Rise Heart on the board, you don't care because you can just attach this uh, to a Rise Heart when it gets banished. Because remember, that's once per chain. So they like Lightning Storm back row. Oh no, this got banished. Okay, cool. A Rise Heart's just going to go ahead and reattach. Now I have another material to banish one of your cards face down. I don't care because I'm most likely going to have your zones locked out anyway. So it's a really busted card. It's really disgusting. Um, it's first effect of banishing three cards on the grave doesn't really ever come up. And then we're playing three copies of Prosperity just for more gas. Um, it, it's, it's Prosperity. It's disgusting. It's really good. I wasn't originally playing this, and I actually really like it. So three copies of Dark Ruler. This deck does have a bit of a hard time breaking boards, which was funny because when I live streamed playtesting this deck, I broke a board without even playing Dark Ruler, and I wasn't even playing Dark Ruler at the time. 
Um, but Dark Ruler, like, especially against decks that want to play, like, a bunch of Omni Negates, like, against Sword Soul, you just play this, and then they they just have two vanilla monsters if they end on Baron and Changing. They have a Blackout in the back row. Cool. Like, uh, have fun, boo-boo. Like, if I can play through that, then I'm fine. Um, but, yeah, the going second game is just kind of really difficult. Um, you know, if the tier element player ends up ending on, like, Root Calories or something, you want to have a way to just kind of shut off the board and not really worry about much. So Dark Ruler has been fantastic. I was playing one call by, but again, it was conflicting with the banishing amount that this deck can do. So I'm going with Talents, and I am going to be side decking two copies of Thrust once that comes out in Hypernova. Be sure to subscribe to the channel because we bought a case of Hypernova. So, you know, you don't want to miss that. <laughs> um, talents is great. I mean, they hit you with a hand trap, especially too, because Kashtira in general has a hard time playing through hand traps. Um, talents is just so good. Rip, rip, shuffle a card back into their deck. You know, take control of a monster, draw two. It's 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 talents. It's disgusting. Terraforming because you know you want four copies of the field spell, and then these are actually three copies of Imperm. Just you know, we're we're playing three Imperm. They're they're on the way in the mail. Um, they're just kind of irrelevant cards that I threw in. And then last but not least, we're playing one copy of Big Bang. It's basically an evenly match, but for monsters, if you control and exceed, it's really not that good. Um, it's basically for those situations when you only end on like a Shangri era. Um, but the, like that never really comes up. Usually the opponent's just got a lightning storm or trying to evenly match you, which this deck does get blown the fuck out by. Uh, for the extra deck, we're playing two copies of Shangri-La. Uh, two's fine. Uh, we're playing two copies of Diabolsis because it's good. Uh, my, my stuff's still coming in the mail. Don't don't judge me. Two copies of Arise Heart because <laughs> we pulled one in our premiere pack or sneak peek, whatever it is these people call it these days. Two copies of Flare Metal because I want to win in time. Uh, two copies of Big Eye because taking control of your stuff's fun. Uh, and then one copy of Draco Sack. You're also playing one of the Harmonizing Gradle. You're playing two Zeus. And then from that point, like you pretty much just fill your extra deck up with just rank seven exceeds. Um, I don't like Dark Charmer because there's just no reason to play it. Uh, links like Access Code and Mascarina. Again, there's no reason to play those cards when you're just basically a rank seven exceed toolbox deck. That's kind of how I view it, which is not a bad thing because I mean you know, you don't really need other things to win the ballgame. If you go first and you end on Diabolsis, a Rise Heart, and a Shangri Era, like, you're winning the game if the opponent doesn't have Sphere Mode or, like, Nibiru Ring you at the end phase or, like, an evenly match. Even if they have evenly match, you just end on Shangri Era and, like, just have fun. Like, especially if the opponent has, like, three zones locked out. Like, it's fine. Um, so, anyway, that's that. Uh, side deck, I'm just going to go ahead and blow through it. Like I said, we're playing two Thrust in the side deck. Uh, and then we're playing three Lightning Storm, three Evenly Match. Uh, you've got to be able to win Go Second. This deck loses to Kaijus, Lightning Storms, Evenlies, Nibiru's, Fear Mode. It, it's very easy to beat this deck. Like, people say it's Tier 1, and it is now with the New Balance. But it, woo, Lord Jesus, have mercy on your soul. It loses to Blowout cards. Three Judgment, because you've got to beat those Blowout cards. And I'm still on this. No one else is playing it, which is fine. If I go to a regional, no one's expecting this four-card combo. Three light, four sword, and one a pointer. No one's expecting it. That's fine with me. You open up multiple copies of these, and if you're going first, you also side deck in the two um, thrust. So you're essentially playing two more copies of each of like your normal traps and spells. It's so, like you can just go thrust and then search like a light, four sword and set it. And then you just start ripping cards of the opponent's hand. Remember, light force sword banishes face down, so it's going to trigger your Shangri-La. A pointer banishes face up, but you don't care because a rise heart's just going to grab that card that gets banished face up and attach it as a material because it, the card doesn't have to be banished face down. It just has to be banished in general. Then they won't get their card back off of a pointer. Same applies for light, light force sword, except Shangri-La will lock out uh, a zone. So, guys, that is my Cash Tira deck. Like... It's a really fun deck, but man, does it lose to um, blowout cards such as, uh, you know, evenly lightning storm Nibiru, all the things I mentioned, kaijus. I mean, it's it's really not hard to break apart this deck's board. You know, maybe people will be playing the adventure package. It's just from what I've tested with that, it just feels so bricky. You know, like just the amount of bricks that you got to play to build your brick house. Like, man, I. I've been playing enough brick-ass decks. I'm ready to just pile drive through my opponent's monster and spell and trap zones and sit there and play with my diddly. <laughs> so, guys, this was my Cash Tira build. Please, community, take it as, you know, a rough draft and go from there. Maybe I'm totally wrong. I want to see the deck get better and not just auto-lose to Nibiru. Maybe we have to play Tira Element Cash Tira. I don't know. But for now, this is the best that I can come up with.
Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.